Welcome back guys. It is thrift haul time. So I haven't done a thrift haul video in a while. I've shown you lots of thrift flips, but not really the haul that I have. Um, if you've been keeping up with my channel, you know that I just got my first vendor booth. I need to make sure that I have items to restock with. So I had to go out and make sure I had plenty. So this is going to be a haul video um, from some trips that I've made some family members giving me some items, some items around the house that I can use, along with a few very simple, and I'm talking back to the basics flips that you can do quick and easy to be able to turn an item, just to kind of show you it's not as intimidating as it looks. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to jump into this haul. Now again, this is from local thrift stores. Um, I get a lot of questions of where do you find your items? Um, where should I go? Where should I look? I'm going to say the one big one that no one likes to hear, but I do go to Goodwill a lot, not because I like supporting them, but because that's one of my few options. I do have local thrift stores in my area. I have checked them out, but for the items that I am needing, the prices just are not where I can turn a profit. And the entire point of me doing this video, or not just video, but this, um, Kind of business is obviously to turn a profit to pay my bills because I am a mama just trying to make ends meet. Just like you, <laughs> I am one in the same and so I have to go where it's best. Hopefully once the ball gets rolling and things kind of take off for me, I can take those profits and give them back locally in order to support them for the prices that they're asking for. But unfortunately, that is just not the situation that works best. So please don't come for me. I have my reasonings. I like to support local, I'm all about it, but there's only so much I can do for what I have. So yes, I do support my local Goodwill um, because that's where I can find the stuff and that's where I can afford it in order to actually make a profit when I flip. You should definitely check out your local stores. I'm not saying all places are overpriced or anything, um, but that's in my area, that is what I come to. So once, like I said, once I'm able to kind of get the ball rolling and make things happen, I'm happy to start trying to patronize them a little bit more but right now for the items that i'm looking for i'm not finding in there, them there and if i do it's just not at a price that makes me be able to turn a profit while also being fair and um good to my clients who are you know paying me i don't want to rip off an arm and a leg from them due to my high costs so that's how i kind of keep it low so the stuff that i'm showing you in this video today is from local thrift stores it's from goodwill some of it's from family members who give me um, items that they know that i could probably do something with some of them is just from stuff that i have around my house so we're just going to kind of get into it and i'm going to show you all of the items and then after that i'll show you a few very very easy ways to go ahead and flip um, like I said, it's going to be basic, basic stuff because I know it can be intimidating and if you're looking to get started in this, show you a few ways that you can just take one piece um, and turn it into something brand new, make it look gorgeous, give it its second life without it being overwhelming or super scary. To begin, I'm just going to kind of grab the stuff around me. I'm going to start with the stuff that's kind of off season. I like to grab Christmas fall stuff um, when it's off season because you can get it that much cheaper. So I found this beautiful little tin sled. Now I don't love the paint on this or like the colors on this, but that's the beauty of it. You can flip it to make it anything you want, but it's in great condition. And I picked this up for less than $3. I also have, give me one second. Okay, I also have this reversible sign, which I don't think I'm gonna touch. Um, I got this for less than $3. Don't get your tinsel in a, in a tangle, which I thought was super cute, but I love it because it's reversible. So it says, as for me in my house, we'll serve milk and cookies, Christmas 24 seven. I think it's adorable. It's in fantastic shape. Um, usually the stuff that I pick up is dinked up, cut up, smudged up. Um, this one is not. So I got really lucky with this find. Again, it was $2.59. Very happy about that. I have this one, it just says gather. I'm thinking if I did anything to it, it would probably just be very minimal, but um, this is stuff I'm just gonna store away until you know fall and Christmas come back around because I got it at a good price. Now this is a hand painted, it's just a little wooden sled that somebody hand painted a Santa on. I can't decide if I'm going to change this or not. I 
think the character of it is super cute. Um, I might just add, like you can tell there used to be some type of greenery or something embellishments on this and I think that's what I'll stick with. I'll just kind of um, spruce it back up and leave this because I think it's gorgeous. It's got its own little character. Again, this was $2.59. And then I have this big old sign um, for fall. It's a porch standing sign. So it has like this, it has like flat, these letters that are kind of up and raised and then a thing and it literally just says fall and it has a self-stander on the back which is awesome this originally i don't know where this came from actually but it was originally priced at 60 dollars. i got this for 6.29 it is it's been worn um it has some beat up to it but i think what i'll do is i'll clean it up and repaint um and kind of put my twist on it but very lucky to find that and then maybe um, get some re-support for this because it's kind of, it's a, it's a little little flimsy and slightly bent, so I'll have to fix that up. And I think that's most of the like fall Christmas that I've picked up. I don't want too much of it because I do have to store it, but thought that was really cool. So then I have a couple items. I went to Hobby Lobby, which I'm typically a Michaels shopper. Um, I don't tend to go to Hobby Lobby very often, but the basswood that I use and a lot of my like faux shiplap things, Michaels hasn't been having it. I don't know if there's a shortage or what, but I've been having to go to Hobby Lobby for that. When I did, it was just striking at the right time to where they had a big clearance. So I went through, I got this little bucket. Um, I paid $2.24 for this. I got it because it's broken on one side. So all I have to do is pop this off and then I can create a little bucket I can make it another wall hanger because it's flat on one side or it's nice and thick so it can sit um so I grabbed that and then I have two of these look how beautiful this clock is now this clock was originally priced the other one is sitting over there and I think it was 60 to 80 dollars I got each of them for 13 dollars now it says does not run here and it says it on the other one too. I popped a new battery in the back. This has been running for probably a week now and it's still accurate on time. Originally, if it was broken, I was not gonna replace the motor. I was going to pop the clock out of the back because it has these screws and I was going to do something other than that here in the background and use this frame because it's a gorgeous frame and I thought it would be cute to have a, a matching set but now I'm not certain if I'm going to flip it or if I'm just going to resell it since I got such a good deal and it does actually work. Their batteries were just dead. $13. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing closest to me, my brother dropped off. Oh my goodness. These gorgeous black wired. So I think these were probably like a... I don't know if it's, I'm going to call it a closure, like a, for a light, basically to protect the light bulb. That's what it looks like to me. I have four of these now, and I think what I want to do is turn them into little plant hangers. In my head, that looks really cute. <laughs> so there are four of these, and then there are two of these. They're nice and big, and I'm not exactly sure what this one was, but it has hooks already. So if it's not already a hanging plant, holder that's what they're going to be so I have two of these two of those I love that people think of me <laughs> when they have stuff to get rid of so we have those and then um, odds and ends stuff I have this magazine holder sorry guys I'm a little unorganized this magazine holder um, I don't plan to flip it as a magazine holder I have a couple things running through my brain so keep a lookout for this in a future video because of something that I think is gonna be really cool to turn it into multiple items and then like this woven it's like a placemat like a placeholder um, I think what I'm gonna do I'm uncertain at this point I'm not exactly sure but I think what I'm going to do is turn it into a wall hanger and possibly do one of the pocket floral holders that I do but I'm definitely thinking some type of wall holder rather than placemat especially because I only have one of them I picked up this I'm pretty sure this was like 
one of those little crates that toys come in. You see the stickers on the back? I'm gonna turn it into a little serving tray. That is dirty, can you see all that flying around? Um, speaking of trays, I like to pick up trays if I can find them in good condition. This one, I love the shape of it and I love the handles. So this is really loose. I'll have to tighten all of this down and definitely give it a paint job because this color is not doing it for me. But it is broken. Where is it? Right here. So we're going to need to get some, <coughs> excuse me, some wood glue and definitely get that secured back up so it's not going to go anywhere. But I got this for, for $5.59, which for a good tray, those are expensive these days. So one that kind of matches that, it's not technically a tray, but it's a basket. Look at this one. I love the shape. I actually love the color. I'm not sure that I'm going to do anything to this. It looks like there's not really any repair that I need to do. This was $5.59. Look at that. That's beautiful. It can go on like on a sofa shelf, a nice thin shelf. It can go as a centerpiece on your kitchen table. So it just needs cleaned up. And we snagged that one. I love to pick up wall art and vases and that kind of thing. We'll get into that in a second. I have random fruits. People love um, fake fruits in bowls for some reason. I got two of these antique apples, which these came with a, a set of apples, but I already flipped the others um, in a past video and used those to make like a little apple crate that was super cute. A couple little bowls that this nice really characterized metal bowl and this beautiful wood bowl so they, these were both a dollar each I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna use them yet but I think I'm going to use the, this as a fruit bowl to make it into a set but we'll see vases look at this shape on this vase and the the detail in there I just think it's beautiful like just the little roses and all of the the greenery I again am not into this sh color I found this and that tray at the same time and it's hard for me to assume that they're both the same color that they didn't come from the same household but I think this is beautiful we can definitely flip this and bring out all that detail make it gorgeous this was $6.59 which is a little more than I typically would pay but I love that shape so much that it had to come home with me I also found this one and this is just like a little tin shape or vase and it has um, some detail on it and it's got, it's like purposely bumpy and it was painted, it was made for like the flaky and I absolutely, I think it's gorgeous. I love it. This is one I think we're going to flip today in the video just to show you how to pop some of this detail without actually changing much. I paid $5.59 for this one too, but again, if I see a piece that speaks to me and it's not outrageous and I know I can still get something back, especially if it's a simple flip, then I'm going to take it. And this is one of those pieces. It's gorgeous. I love it. Okay. And then we have this simple, oh, it's set. This just, I love you. It's just a wire, like a thick metal little sign it has little hooks so you're supposed to just hang it on the wall as is i am wanting to mount this to another like to a piece of wood and make turn it into its own piece this was two dollars and 29 cents but for good sturdy wording you're gonna pay some good money so i grabbed that when i could here's another wall piece it's really big this is just a metal wall piece. I liked the flowers. Um, this will be a simple flip for me too because there's honestly not much I can change. I'm just going to kind of change the dynamic of the colors a little bit and make them a little more subtle. This piece was $8.29. I liked it because it actually goes like this. Sorry guys. It has the hangers already on it. It would be easy for me. And then again, so what I typically look for all flippers have like their item so if they see it they're buying it it doesn't matter for me that is signs I pick up signs because I like to make like wall art and things like that I have people who order signs for me that investment is worth it especially if it's a framed sign that I can get for a good deal that I can flip because then I don't have to build it myself 
especially with wood at these prices. So I found this sign, which I thought had some good character to it. I love the metal at the top. It's just a simple like three tiered sign. It's good quality. It's nice and um, it's got some good weight to it. It does. I don't know where it's from originally. Oh, it's from Hobby Lobby. It was originally $20. I got it for $8.79. So all now all I need to do is put my own, you know, turn this into whatever I want it to be. I think it's super cute and has a bunch of character. So I grabbed that when I saw it. Um, I have a bunch of signs. So give me a second. This one is super heavy. This it's a, like a map of the world, which I'm still not sure exactly what I want to do with this piece, but I got this for $3.59. It is very heavy, nice quality, built-in hooks. So I could not pass this up, especially with how expensive wood is right now. Like it is a solid piece. So I had to snag it. One second. I found this really pretty wooden circle frame. I'm not really sure exactly what this is supposed to be. It doesn't really say. Oh, I guess it went with a plate set. I don't know, but it has a really good lip to it. So I could turn this into a, um, a wall frame and it comes with hardware. I thought it was a really neat find. I got it for $3.59 and I think I'll I love the circle frames or like the frames that aren't perfectly square or anything like that because I feel like they're eye catching and sometimes you just need something a little different. So here's another one. This is a little sign. I like these because they're nice and thick so you can set them on a shelf or you can hang them on a wall. Again, nice and simple and easy for me to do something over top of it if I need to. It says blessed are the curious for they shall have adventures which is super cute but if you actually looked up at it. It's scuffed up. It's scratched up. It's dirty. I got this for $3.59. I found this beautiful cross. It says Santa Barbara Design Studios, but it's a, it's kind of like a soft, I don't know if it's wood. It kind of feels like wood, like a really soft wood, but I just thought that was very beautiful. It'd be a super easy flip. I think all I would do is slightly change the color like the coloration of it and keep it pretty natural and primitive but I thought that was beautiful so I grabbed that again another little shelf sitter I love these they're super easy for me to flip okay I found this little sign I just like the design or the shape of it um, again something easy that I can paint over and add my own little flair to this one I think it's super cute as is, and I wouldn't do anything to this except for the fact that it's really scuffed up and it has like, so usually, okay, here's the thing. People sometimes get upset with me because I flip items, <clears throat> but in the videos, I don't do a full close up all the time of all of the damage. So this looks adorable, right? Let's keep it. This is what you guys aren't seeing. This is in the picture. Like even if I scrubbed that, that's not going to come out. There are scuffs all over this that are not going to come out. I don't feel right putting this back out there because this doesn't reflect my quality. So I need to fix this up, you know, do whatever I need to do to make this a good quality piece again. So the people who get upset with me, they don't see the scuffs. They don't see the stuff that you can't just sand out, that you can't just clean off the cracks from it being dropped and broken that I have to fix and put back together. There are so many reasons as to why I won't just take an item exactly as is and do it and like flip it because one, I like to put my style and spin on things, but two, my whole thing is I like to give things a second life. So just because in the video you don't see all of the damage that's done to a piece doesn't mean it's not there. So I understand if you see a piece and you think it's beautiful as is, I need you to understand that I took this off of a shelf where its next destination was the trash can. If I didn't come along, it was going into a dumpster. And to me, I'm, I'm pulling it, I'm giving it a chance for it to go into someone else's home and have a second chance. Um, so if that upsets you and you don't like when people do that, then maybe flip videos aren't really for you. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I just mean that in a, you know, I do what I do for a reason. If it's a beautiful piece, then I, 
I'm not going to touch it, but for the most part, anything that I find on those shelves has damage, has scuffs, has needs to be painted. Like there's something with it and there's some reason that someone got rid of it. And so I'm just here to snatch it up and give it purpose again. All right, back to signs. Yeah, this wood sign here, just a little welcome sign. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this was hand painted or not, but it has a hand painted vibe to it. I'd be surprised if this was sold in a store. Just that one. This one, I love it. Look how cute this is. This just came from Walmart. But I got this for $7.59. Again, from back there, it looks gorgeous, super cute. I wouldn't touch it. But if I get closer, <laughs> you can see all the damage and all of the scuffs and all of the, like I said, it's not as simple as just wiping it and getting it out. Like there's paint completely chipped off right here that you can see. So when somebody is up close and actually shopping, they're going to notice all of those things and they're going to be like, no girl. Again, that's why we do what we do. I found these two, this, this one's just like, like the MDF board stuff. Again, this one came from Hobby Lobby. It's $20. I got it for $3.59. This one I thought was really cool because it's like, you hear that? It's like almost like a canvas back here. I don't know. It's like a fabric, almost a fabric. Let me see. Can you guys tell? See all those little bumps? So it's really textured. So I'm not really sure how exactly I'm going to make this work yet. But I thought it was really neat. So I snagged it. What else? I think that's all of the frames and stuff I have on hand. What else do I have to show you? One second. I picked up this pretty swag. I love the grapevine stuff, so I'm just going to pull off the old florals and create my own little design. It already has a hanger and everything. I thought it was super cute. It needs to be cleaned up. This was $5.59. I picked up this Believe sign. Um, this was $3.59. Not much I can do to this. I do think I'm going to change up the color slightly. Do a quick flip on that. And then this one, this was $5.59. This little owl like wire vase is super, super cute. I love this. I think he's absolutely adorable. You could put, use him as like a flower pot, like for florals. You could use him for a candle. Um, you could put a glass vase with a candle in there. You could do a lot with him. You could use him to collect corks. I think he's super cute. And I was happy to get him. I think that's everything. Um, in our basement, we found this. So my boyfriend, his house is from the 1950s and he bought it from just a, a little lady that lived here. And when she left, she left him a bunch of stuff. Um, and a lot of it was in or ended up in the basement and he never fully went through everything. And we've been going through and decluttering and stuff. And so we found this cute little flash jar and lid that can be cleaned up and used. I think, I think we've gone through everything. Let me look, let me look around. <laughs> I have this little, um, this isn't wood. It's like the MDF board stuff. This little, it's like a little flamingo, just a, like a little box. And then I also have heavy and holding some stuff. My friend gave me her empty candle thing in case I can use that for anything. And then I found this wood, just a wood box. Um, it's holding some stuff in there right now that I plan to clean up and, and refresh. And I think that's everything. I really do. There's probably more because I have a ton of stuff. But I need to get busy on flipping some of this stuff. Again, I'm going to kind of show you guys just a few very easy, simple ways to get started and how, you know, to start building and get, build your confidence if you want to become a flipper. It's a lot of work. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not. It is a ton of work. You have to love doing it. I love doing it. I love seeing the outcome. I love seeing something that's 
old and turning it new again, taking something that maybe it wasn't meant for that purpose and turning it into something else. I genuinely love doing that. I love seeing the outcome. I love um, just the feeling that it gives me to know that I'm capable of taking something that would have ended up in the dumpster and have somebody proudly display it on a shelf, you know? So to me, I love that. Um, you have to love it because it's a lot of work. I feel like people think it's just super easy, quick way to get cash and it's really not the truth at all. You have to put a lot of love and labor into these items. Uh, I have like some hand issues from it, just like from a constant like gripping and pulling and holding and painting and all of that stuff that comes with it. It can, a piece can take me anywhere. Some of the ones I'm gonna show you today will take you from five to 20 minutes. Super easy, quick flips, like I said, to help build your confidence. But then there are a lot of items that take me three to eight hours, just depending on how big it is or how many steps are included, how much dry time from all of the paint and things. So you have to have patience and like I said, love doing this. And I hope that I can help build your confidence so that you can if it's something that you love and you're just not sure how to do it yet. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward for you so that we can get into a couple of these quick flips. See you in a second. Future me here interrupting the video to announce the giveaway winner. The giveaway was for us hitting a thousand subscribers and a thank you from me to tell you guys how much I appreciate your love and support. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I really, really appreciate it. I went through all of the comments and checked all of the qualifications, put your guys' names into a drawing and picked out the one that is the winner. Now I did try to recruit some help. Pick one. She's a very cute little girl. No. But she wasn't having it. So mom had to try it herself. <laughs> went through, and the winner is, and I apologize if I mispronounce, Dupesta. I went through, like I said, every single one of your guys' comments, hand wrote out, put it into a drawing, and picked the winner. I will comment below your comment on how you can contact me. And we will be in contact from there for the $50 in US dollars. Like I said, that can be a Visa gift card, a PayPal or a Venmo, whatever is gonna work best, but you and I can work out those details. Thank each and every one of you for entering into the drawing and the giveaway. I love you guys very much. Please continue to interact with me. Your words were so sweet and very uplifting and motivating for me to move forward. All right, back to me. Always start by removing all of the stickers, whether it's price tags or stickers from the store that it was sold from, and then giving all of the items a really good cleaning. We are going to get started with this cute little wire owl base. We are simply going to spray paint him white. I am using the Rust-Oleum 2X. It's a paint and primer, and I'm using it in flat. I'm just going to take it outside. Uh, it was dark when I did this, so I'm sorry I don't have footage of it, but we just paint him white. I like to set my stuff on an old board. That way I can spray it down and then pick it up and move it if I need to. So I just did a good solid coat all over him. I'm not worried about um, there being like full coverage because I am now going to let it dry fully and then take my 120 grit sandpaper and lightly distress the entire thing. I just kind of want to pop out some of the details in his eyes and on his little cute nose and call it a day. Super easy, it makes a huge difference, kind of brings it back to life. And we can move on to the next one. We're going to be doing the red vase. Again, I love this piece just as is. I just want to kind of mute that red color down a little bit and pop out some of the details that it has in it. I'm going to be using some white wax. Now, I made this white wax on my own. I use the Waverly waxes typically. Um, if Most of the time, that's what I have on hand. I like to have clear on hand because you can make your own tinted waxes. Now, if you were to use the Waverly white wax, it comes out like a creamy off-white, and I did not want that color. I wanted a bright white. I have already mixed up some wax from past projects because I like the brighter whites. So I just took some of the clear white and added a little bit of white acrylic paint until it became the color that I wanted. And once I was happy with that, you just take a brush, 
and you paint it on. Here I'm using an actual wax brush. You can use a stencil brush. If you don't have that, a plain old paintbrush is fine. Uh, I like the stencil brushes and stuff better just because they, like a nice soft bristled brush, will soak in the wax and get a really thick coat. I feel like it's easier to distribute it with the brushes like this that have like the harder bristles. Um, and you can kind of do like a swirling motion to make sure that you get it in there, especially for a piece like this that's really textured. And then you're going to wipe it off. So I like to do mine in sections, that way the wax doesn't get too dry. And you just either take a paper towel, um, I'm using a rag, one, it's like one of those micro rags, so I know that it's not gonna leave lint everywhere, and I'm just going to wipe it off. Depending on the texture of what you're using, you will either do circular motions. Here, I kind of went side to side, and then I went back across the other way to make sure there were no streaks. And it's just gonna leave that wax in the in the little creases and divots and all of that um, texture that's on the vase. It's gonna kind of show off and make it pop a little bit, but also mute down that red color. And it's as simple as that. I love the way that this one turned out. I think it's really beautiful. I love all the dimension in it. Again, it's as simple as painting on the wax and then wiping it off. Again, do it in sections. That way you can control how when the wax gets dry, it's really hard to get back off. We are going to also be doing this wood cross. Uh, again, this is a very, very soft wood. I wanted to darken it up, so I'm going to be using the Waverly Antiquing Wax that I have mixed with water. I like to water it down, that way it's not too dark. It's also easier to control when you paint it on. You can always add more if you want it darker, but you can't necessarily take it away. I just want to keep you to keep that in mind. That's why I like to water mine down. I also know that this is a soft, you know, with a soft wood, it's going to really absorb, and that's going to make it harder to wipe off any excess and it's going to be harder to control the color. So I'm going to be using a wide brush that will pretty much cover this entire cross the face of it because it's going to leave less streaks. So if you use a smaller, you know, not as wide brush and you're going, if you're overlapping a lot for something like this that's really soft, that's going to absorb it, you're going to see those overlap lines. So just be careful with that. You paint it on and again, you just wipe it off. So you wipe off any of the excess. For this, I just use a paper towel. I did it over the entire surface and I let that dry. Once that was dry, I decided I wanted this to be reversible so that if somebody doesn't like, you know, the dark brown or like more primitive, they can flip it and use the other side. And I just did a rough paint with the white chalk paint over top of it. I was gonna do it really light, but then I decided I want a kind of a heavier white, but you could still see through it. So it's not a solid coat of paint. I let that dry. I'm impatient, so I did use my heat gun. I use this, especially for chalk paint, because chalk paint dries fast anyway, but if you have a heat gun or even just a hair dryer and you hit it, it's going to help that paint dry and cure a little bit faster. It makes the process go quick. I mean, this one is a quick flip anyway, but just a little heads up, I do have my heat gun that I use linked in the affiliate links if you're interested, but I just hit it on there and let it dry. And then I took some of the clear wax, rubbed it on, and then wiped off all of the excess just to seal it in because chalk paint does need to be sealed. And the last and final quick flip that I have for you today is the beautiful like grapevine swag. I just removed the florals off of it. Now usually for something like this, if it's something I'm trading florals out, I will keep them and reuse them. I didn't keep these ones because they're really dusty and old and I just don't want that in my house, but I did keep these. I think these are beautiful and I know I can definitely use these for another project. I love the long spriggy tall flowers like this. Um, that's a personal preference, so I'm going to keep those, but the other ones I did toss. Um, typically, if I pick stuff up from the thrift store that has florals and stuff in it, I do go ahead and toss just because you don't know what's in there, you know? Just get it out of your house. Just go ahead and get rid of it. If it comes from a friend or something, like I had a friend who gave me an old wreath that I flipped, I kept all the florals from there. I knew where it came from. I knew, you know the hygiene of the area that it's in and everything. And so I am able to reuse those. I just don't want you to think I just trash everything. But to do this, um, anytime I do this or with wreaths, especially with flowers where you're kind of placing it, I always do a dry run. So I will put everything in where I think it looks good. That way, if it doesn't look exactly how I want or it's not quite balanced, I can pull things out and move them around before they're secured. 
So I did this on both sides. I am using the Purple Lavender from Walmart as well as the, I believe it's Sage, no it's the Eucalyptus from Walmart. They're both really beautiful at a really decent price. I also have some white little florals that I just had from past projects as well as this big white flower in the middle. I apologize, I'm not a plant person. I have no green thumbs. My thumbs are as black as can be. I'm gonna kill it, don't give it to me. So I don't know the names of flowers or anything, but this big beautiful white flower in the center instead of a bow, I wanna keep it really natural. I laid it all out to where I want it to be and to secure it, you can either use um, small zip ties or hot glue. Hot glue is a really quick and easy way to do it. That's what I went with today, however, if it's a piece that you're keeping for you personally and it's something you want to change out with the seasons, use a zip tie and that way you can just snip that zip tie, take it out and not have to worry about pulling glue off. The hot glue does peel back really easily but sometimes with these fragile twigs and things that are on there, it can snap them and do some damage. So I just wanted to throw that out to you. Once I got it all in place, I just hot glued everything in and bam, another quick and easy flip. Again, my whole point of doing this is just to show you guys that you can make huge transformations and not a lot of time just to start out easy that way you're not I know it can be intimidating if you're not it's something that you've not done before but everyone has to start somewhere paint can make a huge difference just be be careful if you're spray painting that you're not super close to it you're moving at a steady pace you're not getting drips if you're painting something Try to get rid of all of your brush strokes unless it's a textured look that you're actually going for so the brush strokes don't matter. Just little things like that. Pay attention to the details because that's what's going to take your project to the next level. It doesn't have to be over complicated. It's super simple and I hope that this was helpful for you. I would love to hear which one of these flips was your favorite. Was this helpful for you in any way? Are you currently a flipper and have any tips for me? I always love taking in new information and trying new things. I really love that you guys are here. I truly appreciate you being here. If you could give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if it was helpful for you, if you like this content, it helps YouTube know that my content is worthy of pushing out to find others so that we could all join this crafting journey with me. Subscribe if you're new here. I appreciate you spending your time with me today. If you're returning, thank you as always. I love you, love you, love you. You're the best. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.